Hey, Instagram. What's up? I am finishing some cooking and I was like, or is it cooking? It's not really baking or cooking, but um, I'm working on finishing this these little treats that I'm making and I was like, let me jump on Instagram live and see how people are doing. What's up, you guys? Um, so I just posted this little recipe on my stories and people were like, yo, this looks delicious. So I made these little um, treats. Let me show you guys. They're so cute. They're vegan. They are um, have a lot of protein and they are really, really delicious. So I'll tell you guys what I use to make them. Um, hey, everybody. Oh, my goodness. A bunch of people jumping on. What's up, you guys? Um, so I'm using oatmeal, peanut butter, uh, maple syrup because I can't use honey since that's not vegan. Chia seeds and flax seeds, cacao nibs, which are like my new favorite thing, um, like 80 something percent chocolate or cacao chocolate, like 85 percent pure dark. I know a lot of people don't like it because it tastes bitter, but I got used to the taste of it. So I really like it. And I just break it up into little chunks and put it in everything. And what else did I save? Uh, coconut flakes. And these are like toasted ones. I don't know if you can see them. These are they came toasted. So I like those better. And then vanilla extract. So mixing all those things up in a bowl and it looks something like this if you didn't see my stories like a little crumble and then i put it in the fridge for like 10 minutes and now i'm just making little balls so i'm using the tablespoon thingy to like go like this yes it is so yummy what are you guys saying um no not nips <laughs> nibs with a b y'all so funny oh my gosh y'all are too funny uh what do i do for a living oh i am a the director right now my full-time job nine to five i'm the director of educational outreach for a nonprofit that does personal finance curriculum for high school students we all know i mean unless you're lucky and you got it most people don't learn financial education in school so the organization that i work for called next gen personal finance is trying to change the game and so we create resources and stuff like games and activities and lessons that teachers could use in the classroom to help kids learn about Investing, saving, student loans, debt, mortgage, how, anything that's related to money that we all wish we knew sooner in life. Investing in the stock market, all that stuff. Everything that I post about, basically. Um, hey, girl, reading Becoming at Home. Oh, my goodness. Yes, Jaime. I love that. I I listened to the audiobook because I, I pre-ordered it on Amazon. I mean, you know, Audible, whatever. Amazon's, like, audiobook thing. And it was amazing just because I love, like... Michelle Obama's personality like she's so real man and the way she tells her story is really dope so I definitely loved that book um what are you guys talking about what are y'all doing tonight it's Martin Luther King I know that it's Martin Luther King day junior day and I know people didn't have to go to work I know people didn't have to go to school so you know what are y'all doing I love your voice thank you oh my god that's so cute I always like feel like my voice is raspy um what state am I in I'm in New York City I'm in New York City I don't want to say New York State. I don't know why it just cut me off. Um, but yeah, so let's see. Hey, Alex. Hi, Miss. I need to get some dinner. Are you reading Michelle Obama's book so much that you're like so invested and you can't stop to go and get um, food? Alex said I keep freezing. I'm sorry. It's because my Wi-Fi is bad. It's because it's cold. <laughs> this five degree weather. Nobody can get Wi-Fi. Love what you do. Would you happen to know any finance accounts in LA? Ooh, LA. I don't know. That's like on the other side of the country, y'all. I'm in New York. Um, I don't know. I would definitely just Google or I mean Google like hashtag search the hashtag like personal finance LA, financial education LA, you know, stuff like that. Um You working today? I'm sorry. I had today off for Martin Luther King Jr. Day, but I um I still did some work though. I recorded a lot of videos for Miss Be Helpful. I got a lot of work done. So I was proud of myself. It was so cold outside, I barely went out. I, I tried not to go out. I had to go outside though, cause I'm doing um, college interviews for all the kids that are in, or the kids that I've been assigned to that are in New York City who applied to my alma mater, which is Brown University. Shout out to my brownies in the building. Yeah, but I, um, I had to go interview this girl in Manhattan, like Midtown Manhattan, so. I did have to leave the house and I was like, ugh, so cold. Oh, look at that. Jaime says debt free, debt free dinks, debt free inks. I can't tell. But look at the hashtag from Queer Chicano. 
that um he's in cali he's not in la but he's in cali so he'll know he said they're close to la hi hi everybody who just joined um do i play sports no but i'm active like in athletics and stuff like <laughs> not sports like i go to the gym i train a little bit i do a lot of dance cardio at 305 fitness holla 305 fitness all my 305 junkies um i like to go there it's like a dance cardio workout so it just gives me some cardio and i think it's important to just move your body like just move around it doesn't even have to be that serious like it doesn't even have to be like a serious regimen or routine or anything just freaking move because every time i read about people that struggle with their like health and their fitness and stuff later in life it's usually because of their mobility like they can't move around because they never stretched their body like their joints and their hips people have like hip problems stuff like that so i don't exercise to like you know instagram especially people posting exercise because they're trying to look cute I just exercise because I don't want my body to like shut down on me. I want to keep myself healthy. That's also why I'm vegan. A lot of people think I'm vegan because of the little animals and stuff. Animals are cute and everything, but I grew up eating meat. Like I grew up in Dominican culture, like in DR. My grandma used to literally just grab the chickens and just like ring, ring them by the neck and cook it. Like that's, that sounds horrible, but you know, that's what I grew up seeing because that's the culture over there. It's like you have to eat the animals on the farm or whatever, but I feel like... I stopped eating meat because I've read a lot and seen a lot of documentaries about how it's not really good for your health. So, Also, my dad got really, really sick last year and he had surgery for his intestines. Hit me up if you guys have any questions. Oh, thank you. Somebody said you're amazing. Um, living in New York City is a sport. Yo, that's so true. Who's that? El Salsa? Yo, that is so true. I When I used to do my Fitbit like every day, I would wear it. I would hit like 22,000 steps like on a regular basis. Any given day, 15,000, 18,000, 20,000 steps. Easy, no problem. Because I'm literally running everywhere to go get a train, go up and down the stairs to take the bus, the train. Like, it's just so much walking. Um, so, yeah, but my dad last year had surgery because of his intestines. So, the doctor told him that he couldn't eat meat anymore. He, could, he had to basically eat a lot of fiber, like high, high fiber diet. And... My father grew up eating meat, rice, and beans, like, with no fiber, no nothing green on your plate. If he had something green on his plate, in DR, I don't know about other Latin American cultures, but DR is like iceberg lettuce and, like, maybe aguacate, like some sliced up avocado. But, man, he did not really eat greens, veggies, broccoli, you know, Brussels sprouts, like nothing, no greens. So, because of that... Um, he had to start eating high fiber diet and so then I was like alright I'm gonna do it with him because I know it must be hard he's gonna be 70 this year and to spend 70 years eating rice and beans and meat steak pepper steak chicken whatever however he wants his meat done beef pork whatever like it's hard to give that up so for me it wasn't that hard to give it up because whatever I was I'm in my early 20s but well I was in my early 20s but for him, like, I know it must have been hard. So I did it with him. And I would, like, help prepare meals and look up, like, recipes and stuff that taste good. And so I got used to it. So I don't I don't really miss meat that much. But I do miss cheese. I miss cheese. And I miss, um, what else do I miss that I can't have anymore? Yeah, mostly cheese. Just mostly cheese. Um, candy and stuff, like, I don't really miss that. Because I can make little treats like this. These are little vegan bites that I'm making, by the way, if you just join. I'm making these cute little vegan bites and I don't know if you guys can see them because the lighting in my kitchen is so bad but they're so cute they basically you don't have to bake them or anything which is why I like making them for my favorite little vegan treat and you can just use like oatmeal chia seeds flax seeds maple syrup vanilla extract cacao nibs coconut flakes and peanut butter and mix it all up and then make little balls and put them in the fridge and they, I think you could keep it up to like a week um which is really nice but They'll be gone by the end of the week. I can tell you that much. Can you post a recipe? Yes. Petite day. Petite day. Go to my Insta story right now. So not this one. This is my live. But if you go to the Insta story that I posted right before I came on here, I posted pictures, a little video demo, and I posted the ingredients and the recipe. So, yep. Just go snapshot pictures of my story and you'll have it. Did I ever try dehydrated fruit? Is that different from dry fruit? Like, you know, like when you go buy dried, like, apricots and dry peaches and stuff at the um or dry mangoes like i get a lot of like sometimes when i go to trader joe's i get the dry coconut and dry um mangoes um i've had that but i don't know if that's the same as dehydrated i'm assuming that's the same thing as dehydrated fruit um would you consider having a meetup in new york city yes 
I had an event with two other personal finance influencers not too long ago. Um, hi, living on a budget to five. Um, welcome. I, yeah, I definitely do like a meetup in New York. I think we need one. Like young people who are trying to get their life together with their money. Like I think we need to connect with each other because it's not common for you to be young and not be trying to be like YOLOing out here. Uh, I'm mean, not that you shouldn't be YOLOing, but like, you know, you missed it. I have to check your site. That's okay. Um, I'm probably gonna do another one, but that one was like, like an actual workshop where we talked about how you budget, how do you improve your credit and how to start investing. So, um, yeah, we'll probably do another one. I'll, at least I will do another one. Um, events in San Francisco Bay Area, yes, but mostly for students because the office that I work at is like every six to eight weeks I try to travel out there. What's up, DJ Jules? Um, but yeah, I try to like go out there, but um, you know, it's for work mostly. So I'm not, I can't really like do stuff out there when I'm on company time. I have to like. <laughs> I have to be there for my job, but yeah, maybe I will. I'll, I'll try to plan one if there's enough people out there who would who would be down to come. Especially in New York City, we're not Dave Ramsey's audience. <laughs> oh my God, that's so true. A lot of people tell me that. Like, and I, I'm working on a new channel trailer for my channel. I cannot wait for you guys to see this channel trailer on my YouTube channel. But it's like basically kind of has a, like a little section in there where it's like, you know, we need some younger voices. We need some different perspectives. Not, you know, older white men because in personal finance and especially investing, man, there's not enough women, there's not enough people of color, there's not enough young people. So I feel you, girl. I feel you. Whoever said that, who said that? That you're not Dave Ramsey's audience. Petite day. <laughs> it's true. Um, you want to see one of my speeches? Oof. Okay, so Sandy, I have a really, really bad one. Like one of my first speeches that I ever did is on my YouTube channel. Um, it's like Brown University, Miss Be Helpful. Just like go on my channel and look it up. But um, but yeah, like it wasn't the best one because it was one of my first ones and I was like really nervous and I just talked, talked, talked the whole time and I really needed to be like engaging the audience more. But you know, it was years ago when I had just first started trying to speak more in front of people. So check it out if you want to see a rough version of what I'm, I try to do when I go to schools. It's definitely on my YouTube channel. Living on a budget says you will come out. That's what's up. People can relate to something a little bit younger. Yeah, for sure. Great information. Um, yeah, I'm gonna try to. I mean, next time I'm in the West Coast, I'll try. Um, <laughs> hi, man. It's my friend from out west. He says he shows his his kids, his students, my retirement video. <laughs> no, but it's true. The video that I have about retirement is about like you gotta start in your 20s. Too many people they think like two things that I hate about the way people talk about retirement. One is they say like retirement saving and I, I'm guilty of it too because my video says why you should start saving for retirement in your 20s I'm guilty of it too I need to change that title because it should be why you need to start retirement investing in your early 20s because if you save if you just save for retirement all your life in a savings account like you're never gonna have enough money to retire unless you don't need that much um so unless you don't need like much money at all because the interest rates on a savings account is just nothing like it's not it does it barely competes with inflation and the cost the value of money dropping every year so if you want to have enough to actually retire with a decent lifestyle with decent income every year and not be like you know uh desperately waiting for a social security check that may or may not actually be enough to help you out then you have to be investing for retirement you gotta be you gotta have like a 401k a 403b or a roth ira a traditional ira you gotta have something that is for retirement or even just money in the stock market in general that you invest over 20 30 years i will grow but most people say save for retirement and that gives off the wrong idea i feel like so i don't like saying that uh, we need to start calling it retirement investing not retirement saving have you always been comfortable speaking in public no um I mean, it's because, well, I used to be a classroom teacher, so when you, when you talk in front of kids, kids are the harshest critics, man, because they will just start, they'll just start talking and playing around right in front of your face like you're boring, like you're whack. If you're not, if you don't get them engaged and excited and get them, you know, entertained, they won't pay attention to you because they're kids. Like, their attention span is like this short already. If you're boring on top of that, like, psh, they're going to check out, especially kids in the hood. And I taught in Canarsie, Brooklyn. I taught like 20 minutes away from where I live and so, or where I grew up. So 
yeah, I, that taught me like very quickly. I had to within the first few days of work, I had to learn like, okay, I gotta have a hook. I gotta be able to right away from the beginning. I gotta be able to get these kids' attention, get them excited about what we're about to learn. And I think I started to kind of develop my public speaking skills, or getting at least comfortable and confident in front of kids, and then later on adults, <laughs> because it's very different talking to kids and talking to adults. Um, what am I missing out about Dave Ramsey? Are you against his teachings? No, absolutely not. I think Dave Ramsey helped a lot of people. I just think that when he says um, that people need to cut their credit cards and stop worrying about credit, um, I think that's a little extreme. I personally use credit cards for almost every single thing that I purchase, and I pay them in full at the end of the month. I think credit can be a very helpful tool, especially in low-income communities. Um, we don't always have access to generational wealth and access to opportunities financially that will allow us to build like you know six figure disposable um savings account like that's that takes a lot of discipline and a lot of hard work and um you know i just feel like that's not that it's unrealistic it's attainable for anybody who really wants to do it and commits to it because you can see from people that are in the debt-free community that people are doing this every single day on an average salary but um if you have like my mom and dad have nine kids in Latino culture, a lot of times, not always, but generally speaking, a lot of times we have big families. If you are a parent to nine children in New York City and you're low income, how the heck are you supposed to pay off your full mortgage, cut up all your credit cards, not worry about borrowing at all? Like, and you don't have, um, you know, access to education or to a career, to a 401k. Like, my dad never had any of that. Like, my dad didn't even barely have a bank account because he didn't know about the system in this country. So I feel like when you come from that perspective, you see what Dave Ramsey's teaching and you respect it. I respect it because I know it's going to help a lot of Americans, a lot of people around the world, but it doesn't really always perfectly apply to a certain um, demographic of people that I think have a, just a different experience and a different perspective. So that's why I like to talk about personal finance too. So people out there who may feel like that's not 100% my thing, then you could hear different voices. I think everybody's voice should be up there. Um, Jessica says, very true. Why aren't we aren't against Dave Ramsey at all? Yeah, no, of course not. That's what I'm saying. Like, I think what he's built is amazing. He's built a community of people that truly can, um, you know, prove to anybody that if you commit to something, man, you can change your life. Like saving hundreds of thousands of dollars and paying off your mortgage in a few years and paying off all your debt, like that is hard. And people are doing it every single day by following his baby steps. I respect that. But again, I'm just saying like I use credit and I um, I don't think it always equals debt. Like for me, I, you have like five different credit cards and I don't have any debt. So I just think like we have to make sure we're, we're telling the story the right way instead of telling people like credit equals debt. Like that's just not true all the time. So, you know, that's that's important. Is there a such thing as contributing too much? I have a pension, TRS. Okay, so I'm, I'm assuming you're a teacher or something like that. 43B and a Roth IRA. Girl, there is no such thing. Felicia, hey Felicia. There is no such thing um, as contributing too much unless you're contributing too much into an account that is capped. So for example, the Roth IRA, you cannot put more than $6,000 in 2019 if you are single and you earn less than like, I don't know, 120 something thousand dollars. Like you gotta check that on Google that because it changes every year. So I don't know the numbers off the top of my head. But um, so if you put more than 60, so if you put more than $6,000 in there at the end of the year, you will get taxed. You will get fined a penalty. You, like you'll get smacked with a whole bunch of fees and taxes and you'll, you'll lose some of your money just because you made a simple mistake of putting too much money in that account. But if you've maxed out your Roth IRA and you put money in your 403B and you put money in a TRS and you split it up throughout those accounts and you don't, you know, go over the maximum in any of them do it max them all out do what you got to do if you can afford that and if that's comfortable for you that lifestyle of putting up as much as you can away for retirement then do it especially if you're young if you ain't got no kids if you don't got no husband no wife and you can afford to put more of your money now this is the easiest time to save because once you have kids around the house mommy i want these sneakers mommy i got a class trip i need this money for my class trip you know dad i need money for lunch like you gotta start giving money not to yourself only, but to another person or multiple people if you have multiple kids. So it, it, it changes your finances. So you it's better for you to be able to put as much as you can away now while you don't really have a lot of other responsibilities. Um, you know, while you can because Lord knows, once these kids come or you get married and different expenses like that start to happen, you yeah, it's gonna be hard to to save as much as you could have earlier. Let's see who else is on here. Petite day is balling. Hey, I know, right? She says she's maxing them all out. Now I won't be depending on social security. Right. I mean, you know, a lot of people feel 
some type of way about that. You work in higher ed, that's great. So, okay, education, that's why you said TRS. Um, I know about the caps, good. So if you know the caps, you're good. Is there any way to avoid interest and become financially stable? Interest doesn't sit well with me. Just pay off your full credit card balance before the end of the month and they can't charge you interest. The only way they can charge you interest is if the end of the month comes, the bill comes, and the due date passes and you didn't send your full pay, your full balance by the due date. So if you don't want to, you don't have to pay interest. Um, and anytime you borrow money, you're probably going to be paying interest just because it's very rare that you'll get a 0% loan or a 0% um, credit card. Actually, right now, if you work, if you work for the government, um, if you work for the federal government and you're you, you're struggling right now because the, the government shut down and all of that, I think PayPal is giving free, interest-free loans up to $500. So if you have PayPal account and you need that assistance, you should definitely look into that. Um, and a lot of credit card companies and banks right now are doing the same thing. They're saying like, oh, if you're affected by the government shutdown and you need some resources or assistance financially, like contact us. So credit cards and banks are doing that. Um... Where should I open a Roth IRA? What's the best institution in my opinion? So I personally like robo advising because I feel like it removes the human temptation to chase after more profit in the stock market. So if you pay for a mutual fund manager to invest in mutual funds for you, that person is going to, you know, they're human. They're gonna be affected if, if everybody's saying, oh, the stock market's about to crash, they might, you, they might say I won't, I won't you know, do anything about it, but they might. So, and they also you know, are gonna take a fee. So I, I prefer to get rid of the human element altogether and let computers do the work because they literally just crunching numbers and saying, where's the best place to invest? Oh my God, this one is so tiny. I didn't have that much <laughs> left. Um, you know, where's the best uh, companies, where the, you know, like top whatever, say you're investing in the S&P, they're going to just cr create a formula, they're gonna chase the S&P. 500, they're gonna pick the largest 500 companies, whatever, and that's a formula is gonna figure it out, not a human sitting there trying to research the companies and see. So I like robo advisors. I have both Wealthfront and Betterment, but my Roth IRA is with Betterment, and then I max that out to 6,000 a year. Anything after that that I still want to invest, I put into a Wealthfront account, which is not a retirement account, it's just a general taxable account. Six figures and TSP maxed. What's the next vehicle to invest in? Um, so if you already max out your your uh, TSP, I would say, and you have a, a Roth IRA, you should do a Roth IRA. Oh, you have six. You make six figures. You probably make too much for the Roth IRA. Traditional IRA. If if you're if you're trying to invest for retirement specifically, after your TSP is maxed, do a traditional IRA. If you don't care if it's for retirement or not, you just want to get take advantage of the stock market growth over time, then just pick a uh, brokerage firm and start contributing to a general taxable investment account. But know that when you file your income taxes, if you made a lot of profit, you're gonna have to pay capital gains tax. And if you didn't make a lot of profit, you might, you can report your losses. So it, it's gonna affect your taxes basically if it's not a retirement account. What are you doing, Aloha? You keep looking down. Okay, so if you just join personals uh, underscore, this is a little recipe that I'm using. It's my favorite vegan treat that I like to make because it does not require any baking. So I mixed oatmeal, cacao, dark chocolate, um, maple syrup, peanut butter, vanilla extract, chia seeds, flax seeds, and um, coconut flakes and cacao nibs all in a bowl. And then it makes like just like a mixture I only have a little bit left. I'll probably make like maybe three more. So it makes a mixture that looks like this. I don't know if you can see it. And then um, I just take my little tablespoon scooper and I make these tiny little mounds and then I turn it into a little ball and put them in the fridge and they go up to a week and they're so delicious. Thanks for answering questions, of course. So I popped on. Petite Day says, can you do a video on a backdoor Roth IRA? Yes, I can. I will definitely do one. Um, and actually somebody asked me today too to do a video about a rollover so I will do both of those I'm gonna write them down so I don't forget because a lot of people are asking about rolling over um, and I actually did a rollover myself so I know exactly how that works and I've helped a lot of my friends to do rollovers like especially at my old job um, a lot of people were coming from another job to that one day like what should I do my old um, retirement account I'm like you should just roll it over into a into an IRA. So I hope a lot of people do that as well. Am I into stocks or no? Not individual stock picker. I am a long-term stock investor. So who's that? Jay Loving. Oh, that's my little cousin Joshua. What's up, Joshua? Um, I don't pick individual stocks, Joshua. 
I'm a more, um, I don't know, like I just feel like it takes too much time and it's too risky. I just invest in the whole entire stock market. So it's basically like your GPA. Like if you're taking like five or six classes, um, instead of picking one class and saying, I bet that I'm going to get a really good grade in this one class. Because what if you don't? Like, what if you are absent the day of a pop quiz or something? Like, you never know the future. You don't know if you're going to get the best grade there. You can make your best bet. But instead, why don't you just say, I'm going to study for all my classes and I'm going to bet on my GPA, my average. So that's what I do. Basically, if you take the average of all the company's returns, whether they lost money or they made money, it doesn't matter. Average all those percentages out. And whatever the average is, that's what I get back because I, I invest in the whole entire market. And I do that by investing in index funds. Um, and so basically the one that I use is called VTSAX, it's Vanguard Total Stock Market, which is every single stock that exists that you can publicly trade in the stock market in the United States is in this basket, in this, basically in this fund. And anytime I put money in there, they split it up into like pennies or like fractions of pennies and put a little bit of money into each one of those companies. Some of them are going to lose, some of them are going to go up and win money and then I get the average. So definitely if you're interested in investing. I know you got you and your, your brother y'all over 18 already so you guys should definitely check um check out some robo advisors that have like either low fees or no fees and you could put like 20 bucks a month or whatever and just start doing that now while you guys are young so 10 15 20 years later you're gonna get way more return than you would at the bank when you have money in a savings account and you make like one percent maybe less like maybe five cents on every hundred dollars that you save at the end of the year it's not worth it it's like bank of america city bank chase banks all those banks wells fargo td all of them they're like 0 0.01 or 0 0.05 that means a penny three pennies five pennies for every hundred dollars that you save at the end of the year so they don't even give you a dollar for every hundred dollars that you save that's ridiculous where if you look at the stock market on average over time it's like 9%, 8%. So you can get $8 for every 100 that you save instead of three pennies. Like that's like thousands of t hundreds of thousands of times more money back, which is, is crazy. So that's why I invest. But I invest on top of money that I save. So um, I had a rollover from my previous employer that I wanted to convert to a Roth, but I want to have uh, the cash to pay the taxes. Yeah, you got to definitely calculate it yourself and make sure that you save enough money so when the tax comes, you pay the taxes. It's kind of like a penalty, not a penalty, but it's kind of like, hey, you haven't been paying taxes on this money. Roth means that you're going to pay the taxes now. So just you're going to have to pay us a fee to pay your taxes to convert it to Roth, and then you won't have to pay taxes when you retire. So it's kind of tricky. Basically, you can't avoid the taxes. You're either going to pay them now or later. And if you're converting to a Roth and you haven't been paying taxes on it, you have to pay taxes when you convert. I know you don't talk about it that much, but what was transitioning over to the vegan lifestyle was that hard? Read the kid. Yes, it was hard. Um, I'm not going to front. The first couple weeks, and I'm, I'm telling you guys, I did it because my dad was really sick and he had um, something called diverticulitis, which is basically because he's eating so much meat and rice and beans and he doesn't eat vegetables. I mean, the only vegetable he really ate, I'm telling you guys, was like avocados um, and maybe like, what else did he eat? Um, if platanos count as a vegetable, like I think platanos count as vegetables, right? Plantains. He ate a lot of platanos, right? Tostones and mangu and platanos and cochao, like... That's what he made, plantains, basically boiled plantains or fried plantains and so and, and mashed plantains. So when he's eating that, that's like that's not fiber. So when your body's constantly digesting food like that, it's really hard. And it's basically like think about the pipes and the tubes in your house. If you're constantly putting stuff that is not going through the pipes correctly, it's only either gonna get stuck, the pipes are gonna get stuck and you can't they can't work anymore, or um or in, inside of your body, since your your intestines are, are skin, muscles and stuff, tissues, it's basically gonna get stuck and if it can't go anywhere, it's gonna burst. It's gonna come out of the of your intestines. So that's what happened to my dad. He had a whole bunch of holes in little nooks and like basically little closets and pouches where there was just food accumulating on his, on the sides of his intestines in these little purses and these little bags just holding it. And some of them even broke through his intestines. So he had like, there was blood and he had a lot of like, it was a big scare. He had to go to the emergency room and um, we found out that it was because he was not eating enough fiber and you need fiber so your food can get digested by your body easily. So long story short, I had to basically start helping him, you know, eat a little healthier. My whole family tried to help him out. But my dad, he, you know, we've been eating rice and beans and steak and pepper steak and chicken and pork chops and, you know, all that stuff. 
um, chuletas and all that. So, you know, it's hard for, for him 70 years eating that to change his diet one day to the next. For me, it was easier because I'm young. I've, you know, he's been eating that stuff 50 years more than me. So I was like, all right, like, let me do this with him. And I started reading about like, you know, health and nutrition. And it just convinced me that, hey, if, if, I, if I could do this for like six weeks, eight weeks, I could just keep going. And um, so that's what I did. And um, yeah, so now I'm basically vegan. But the beginning was rough. Like I'll tell ya, my family, they're not, a lot of them are not vegan. I have like one cousin, I think she recently turned vegan. Um, shout out to her, Emily. But most of my family is not. So I would go for Thanksgiving and everybody be like, what you mean you're not eating turkey? Tu no vas a comer pavo. Muchacha, que te pasa? Like, esta muchacha está loca. Like they were just literally saying things about me because they didn't understand. And I think now they're a little bit more, um, understanding and like respect it a little more because they understand why i'm doing it but at first it was just so different like we we grew up you know dominican in, the, in new york city there's not a lot of dominican vegans um around so like yeah it was rough at first because they would just eat like salami frito like in front of me and stuff like fried salami and fried cheese and stuff and i'm like oh it smells so good <laughs> and i miss eating that stuff so at first right but now they do it and i'm like that's okay because I don't really crave it as much anymore. After you do it for like a few weeks, you don't really crave it. Like now I crave like veggies. I crave, especially the way I cook my veggies. I'll be, I'll be going in. So I put all my veggies in the oven and um, I put a little coconut oil on them. Salt, pink Himalayan salt is my favorite salt because it's high in iron, which is what I need because I'm vegan so since I don't eat meat. So I use pink Himalayan salt. I use um, a lot of cilantro, a lot of lemon to give it that flavor that, you know, because it has to taste good. You can't just you know, transition and then be eating dry ass kale and thinking that you're gonna be okay. Like you have to make food taste good. Um, so I use a lot of, of that stuff, but I stopped, using the, I stopped using the seasonings that I grew up eating. So like no more Sazon Goya, no more sofrito, all that stuff, those sofrito packets, the cubito magis, all that stuff. Like it's like chicken bouillon cubes and stuff that a lot of times Dominicans and other Latin Americans cook with that. I stopped using it because it has so much MSG in it. It's just pure MSG, so high in salt. So yeah, basically I started making my own seasoning mixes and then I also use a lot of like turmeric, paprika. I use a lot of cumin. Um, what else do I use? A lot of pepper, um, oregano, you know, all the stuff that gives your food flavor and taste that's not meat. <laughs> like, I mean, I guess that's the best. That's how I can put it. Interesting. I d you didn't know about the rollovers. Yep, it's definitely a good thing. Awesome job. Thank you, Innovo Collective. Some of you guys got some long um, Instagram handle names. Um, any advice on good ways to invest? Like, how much should you invest to start? I would say just start with what you can. If I say start with $150 a month and you go, damn, that's a lot, then cut it in half. Start with 75 If you still think that's a lot, start with 25 Like, start with what is doesn't seem like it's too much for you. It has to be affordable for you. $15 every month, if you could do that, then do it. Start with that. Because if you if you just don't do it at all, you're not you're wasting years that you could be taking advantage of compound interest while you're young. So pick a number. It doesn't matter what the number is. The point is just keep doing it. You're gonna start to see your money grow and you're gonna wanna invest more. You're gonna turn your 15 into 25. You're gonna turn it into 35, then 50. You are gonna do that because you're gonna be excited about how much your money's growing. And sometimes it's gonna drop. Let's be real, the market sometimes ain't doing well. But over time, if you don't take your money out, even through the tough times, you will see a, a better return than the 1% that they're going to give you at any bank or the 1.03% the that you're going to get at all those big banks, Bank of America, TD Bank, City Bank, Chase Bank, all those banks, Wells Fargo, blah, blah, blah. So, um, so yeah, it's better to just invest. Betterment is SIPC protected. Is that as safe as FDIC insured? So there's a difference between SIPC. This is a good video topic. Thank you. Who's that? Jessica? I'm going to do this for my YouTube channel. Okay. So FDIC is when you put money into a bank, the bank uses that money to lend it out to people. They use like 90% of the money that they get from people to lend it out to people and charge the other people interest. So your money is not technically sitting pretty in a bank account, at, like physically in cash, just sitting there. It's not, they're lending it out and making interest off that. But when you actually go to the bank and need your money back, they have to have it there. So they have to legally keep like 10% of all the deposits they get um, in case, you know, people come to the bank to get their money, they actually can take cash out. So that's why it's FDIC insured because if you come to get your money and they don't have it, 
you legally that you have to get your money back because you put it in a bank you didn't risk your money by investing it in the stock market now if you risk your money by investing it in the stock market um, sometimes what happens is let's say uh, you're, you want to invest in, an, in a stock of Apple and it costs whatever. I'm, this is not true I'm just making this up let's say for example a stock of Apple costs a thousand five hundred dollars you put in two thousand dollars and you say I want one stock of Apple one share of Apple stock they're gonna use that money to buy a thousand five hundred dollar stock and you have an extra five hundred dollars so they're gonna just leave that money sitting in like a basically like a parking lot in, in, a, in an account but it's not invested in the stock market it's kind of like it's cash it's cash but it's not in the bank it's kind of floating in limbo it's in an account with your brokerage firm that's not FDIC insured because it's not a, a bank account that money is SIPC insured, which means that you are, you should get it, you can get it back because it's cash. You know what I mean? It's not like it's going up or down in value with the market unless you use it to actually buy stock and invest. So while it's sitting there in the meantime, let's say you want to take it back out and you don't want to buy more stock, then you have to be able to get it back. The only way you cannot get your money back for sure is if you put it in the market and then it dropped and you're like, wait, what happened to my $1,500? Let's say Apple drops to a thousand. You're like, hey, how come I lost $500? I want it back. You can't get it back because you invested it. You, you took the risk that it might drop. Over time, it will go back up, maybe or maybe not, but that's the risk you take when you invest versus SIPC insure is the money's floating in cash form in a brokerage and you, sh you are entitled to get it back. But it's not backed by the FDIC, it's just a different institution. Um, I don't know exactly what the letters stand for, I'm not even gonna front. I think FDIC is like federal district in blah, 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 I don't know. Just look at Google, SIPC and FDIC acronyms and you'll find out. But that's the purpose of what they do. You're taking accounting right now. That's my cousin Josh again. He says we talk about stocks on the side and he told me the same thing, that it is not good to just focus on the stock because you can lose more than, than you win. Exactly. So um, a lot of people online, when you like exactly, um, especially when you go on YouTube, you see a lot of those ads in between videos that be like, I am uh, John Stock trading and I'll teach you about how to trade stocks all day you can make all this profit take my course and I'll teach you with my strategies I've been using for the past 25 years if you don't recognize that that's like a advertise like that that's not, not necessarily a scam because I'm sure they do teach you their strategies but just because their strategies worked for the past 25 years does not guarantee that they're gonna continue to work for the next 25 years or for the next year or for the next week strategies they're you know Maybe you got lucky and they work, but it doesn't guarantee that they're going to always work. So um, I don't like people that encourage other people to trade stocks because I feel like that's very risky. It's kind of like saying, hey, let's go to Atlantic City and gamble and maybe we'll make some money tonight. It's like if somebody's struggling financially, why would you make them do that? They're not in the position to go gamble. That's not right. They need they need financial stability right now. They don't need to go have a good night wasting, you know, potentially losing money. And maybe they'll make money. And you're right. That's that's but that's luck. <laughs> you know what I mean? That's uh, it's not like you can be like, oh, I have this poker strategy that I use that always works. If you go to Atlantic City with me and we go play poker, I guarantee you're gonna make money because this poker strategy always works for me. And then you go and you sit down at the poker table and you lose this strat this round because your strategy worked last time, but not this time. And this time, and now your friend is looking at you like, bro, I just lost five hundred dollars. What the hell? You told me we were gonna win. So don't trust anybody who's trying to encourage you to gamble. Long-term investing, you leave the money in there and you don't look at it until you need it later in your life. So that's not necessarily gambling. It's kind of like planning ahead and just letting your money grow over time. Um, and all of the like personal finance books and financial gurus, they all talk about investing. It's just that most of the time communities like low-income communities and communities of color, we don't learn about that. We don't talk about that shit. Who taught, who in my family knew about the stock market before me? Probably not a lot of people, like I, I would, I would bet nobody because we don't, you know, when you come to America, especially if you immigrate to America and you don't get taught about this stuff, chances are you're not going to learn it. So, yeah. Um, cool. Who else is up here saying stuff? Don't pay. They don't pay crap. Oh, yeah, of course. They don't pay anything, man. I'm telling you, these banks are crazy. They think that, well, they don't think that. They know that. Most people don't know what the interest rate on their savings account is like if you just walk down the street one day out of curiosity and tap like two people and ask them hey do you by chance know do you have a savings account if you do do you know the interest rate they're gonna be like i don't know most people don't know if you find somebody who does know wow they deserve like 
an applause because most people don't know their savings account interest rate. They can tell you the bank that they have an account with and if they have a savings account, most likely they don't know because most people don't know this stuff. So that's why these banks get away with it because people just pick a bank that's convenient or a bank that their mom and dad used or a bank that's on their college campus. People don't research and compare banks. They don't try to pick the best bank for them. So, and it, which is crazy because when you go on Amazon and you're about to buy something, you try to pick around and choose like which one has the best reviews, which one has the cheapest price, you know, and, and good reviews. Like you shop around before you buy stuff, but not bank accounts. When you're picking a bank account, people don't generally shop around. So I think, you know, people need to be more more aware of, of it first. Be, uh, otherwise, banks are going to keep getting away with charging these crappy fees. There are online savings accounts that offer 2%, 2.4%, 2.3%. Uh, Marcus by Goldman Sachs, Ally, um, what else? Barclays Bank, Synchrony. These are all banks that charge like that give you way more profit for your savings account. Um, and it's FDIC insured. So, But the thing is, people don't. Those are not the banks that you hear about every day when you walk down the street. So... Um, I think platanos are whatever potatoes are. I don't know. Are potatoes vegetables? I know, right? It's salsa. I don't know. I don't know. Potatoes, I think. Yeah, potatoes are vegetables. So if it grows from the ground and, it's, and it doesn't have seeds, then it's a vegetable. So I think so I think platanos are vegetables. So yes, they're, they're vegetables, but they're really hard. Like when you eat them, they cause like problems because it's hard to digest them. They're, they're, it's, it's like a really... The, what you call that? The consistency of the food is not easy to digest. Um, hey, everybody who recently joined. So I just, I'm in the, mom towards the end of making these little vegan treats. And I just hopped on live to talk to you guys while I finish making them. If you want the recipe and the ingredients, they're vegan. They, you don't, they don't require any baking and they taste delicious. You can just check my stories, my Insta stories. I put all the ingredients, how much measurement you need of each one and the steps to make them. And they're delicious. Like I'm about to eat like two or three of them and then put the rest in the fridge. Um, so do you still eat platanos? Hell yeah. <laughs> do I still eat platanos? I eat those tones every time I go to my mom's house. So basically if she makes platanos and rice and beans, I'll have that and a salad. And I just put a little bit of vinegar and oil on it. Um, I just don't eat the cheese stuff. I don't eat the, you know, the milk and eggs, all that stuff. So yeah, I eat my plantains for sure. How do you pay taxes for Roth IRA? You don't, you, once you put the money in there, the money that you use to put into a Roth IRA, you've already paid taxes on that money. So like, for example, if you get your paycheck, you could read your pay stub and it will tell you FICA taxes, Social Security, Medicare, federal taxes, state, local taxes. All the taxes are taken out and then you get your net pay. So the gross pay comes first and the net pay is after all the taxes were taken away. Um, so basically when you do that, you then use money that you get from your paycheck to invest in a Roth IRA, which means that those dollars that you're putting in there were already taxed. So when you go to retire, you take out the money and you don't have to pay taxes because you already pay taxes on it. Is it automatically deducted? Do you include it when you file taxes? Nope. Um, me, myself, and Bob's do not worry. Please don't ever, don't ever say sorry for not knowing something. I, I just hate that because I feel like it, they don't teach this stuff to us in school. So why should we be sorry? They should be embarrassed. The government should be embarrassed that they don't make this required in the legislation for educators. It should be required that we get taught this in, in the curriculum in schools. So don't be sorry. So it's, it's not automatically deducted. It came out from your paycheck, like I said. And then do you include it when you file taxes? No, because it's a Roth. So since you already paid your taxes, it's not taxable income. However, if you put money in a traditional IRA, you don't pay taxes on that money. You do put that dollars into it that have already been taxed, but then when you file your taxes, you report that those contributions that you made into the traditional IRA and you get a discount. You get, you get like basically your taxable income gets lowered. So that's when you get the tax break. And then later when you go to retire, they're going to say, Hey, remember we gave you that tax break when you were younger? You got to pay your taxes now because we let you off the hook when you were younger. So it basically you're going to either pay the taxes now or pay them later. Roth, you pay them now. Traditional, you pay them later. Rosamia, um, me encantan tus consejos. Love your energy. Thank you. Gracias. I, I'm so sorry that I don't speak more Spanish on my whole platform. I get so many people requesting that I put my videos in Spanish. That is a project that I, I promise I give it so much thought. It's just that it takes a lot of time for me to like, do it in Spanish um, and I feel like a little self-conscious about my Spanish speaking so it's like a combination of things but I it's a goal that I have written down many times that I want to make it happen because the Latino community man who Lord baby Jesus knows that we need financial literacy in our community so I'm, I'm gonna 
really, really, really work on that because I want to put more content on Spanish. Um, let's see. Do you follow How to Be Vegan in the Hood? Hell yeah, I love him. And honestly, he's super cool. What I think I love about him the most is that he's very honest about everything. Like he will, he'll post if it, if something tasted good or not. It's not like he's just putting advertisements like I feel like a lot of channels nowadays everything is an ad you don't know if they're telling you the truth or not but he is man he keeps it real he'll be like I ate a Beyond Burger oh no not a Beyond Burger what did he say he, he had an impossible burger and he said it made him sick I've tried the impossible burger it actually it was good it didn't make me sick but his experience was different and he didn't lie about it he put that up there so I love I love him What's up, Carlos? He says, what's up, Janelli? Were you raised in Brooklyn or the Bronx? I'm from Brooklyn, Bushwick, born and raised. Shout out to all my people in here from Bushwick. I know my cousin is here, so I know for sure he's from Bushwick. At least there's one other person besides me. Um, that dry kale is the bomb. You're missing out. Oh, no, no, no. I eat dry kale. Man. I eat dry kale. Don't get me wrong. This is some dry kale. It is dry. It's the bomb, yes. But... That's now. Now I eat this and I'm like, mm, 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 mm. but when I first became vegan, I could not eat it. Like it was, it was bitter. You know, it doesn't have any seasoning. And, like it has a taste, but it's not, t the average person wouldn't say it's a good taste because it's bitter. But now if I ran out of um, coconut oil, if I ran out of avocado oil or whatever oils I use, if I ran out of vinegar, I still eat it or if lemon I usually put lemon on it if I don't have any of that then I'll eat it dry I love kale but it takes time it's like you have to train your taste buds kind of like you train a puppy or a dog to behave good you start training it it's not two days three days later it's not gonna be a good dog it takes so much time to train it to behave the way you want it to behave and to respond to your cues and stuff that you tell it Okay, your taste buds have to be trained just like a puppy. You have to train them that, to think or to become taste buds that like, genuinely like the taste of these things. At first, if it's bitter, you're not going to like it. Same thing with um, what I was saying before. I use, I eat really pure dark chocolate, like basically pretty much 85% cacao. That's really bitter. Most people would taste this and be like, oh, and spit it out because it's really bitter. But I eat it, man. I love this stuff. But... It took me months and months and months. I've been almost two years vegan. It, it took me a long time. At first, I would eat it and be like, I, this doesn't really taste good, but it's good for me. It's good for me. I just need to keep eating it. Like, and that's how, and I would cover it with lemon and cilantro and like uh, oregano, like all kinds of things to give it some kind of taste. But now I love it. So don't get me wrong. I do like it. But it, I, what I'm saying is it takes time to get to that point. Um, how did I transition from teaching to what I do now? I basically left the classroom to work in a private company that did after school tutoring and I did not like that job at all. It did teach me a little bit more about business than I ever knew before because I had to like run up like the whole budget for the tutoring center. I had to collect money from all the parents every month. I had to like do you know make sure that everything balanced out and I had to do I had a marketing budget. I had like to do events and so it taught me like about how to use money to run a business but um I just didn't love the way the kids were learning. It was really boring. And so after that, I went back to the nonprofit sector, which is where I did my last job with Reading Partners, where you um, basically people volunteer to go work in schools, in local public schools that are Title I funded, which means that most of the kids have free and reduced lunch because um, their parents can't afford to pay for lunch every day. And you go and help those kids who are most struggling with reading. Uh, you can volunteer to do one hour a week reading with a child who's behind in, re in reading. And that helps them improve their reading level. And I loved that job. And I did that job for like two and a half, almost three years. Or maybe three. Yeah, I think I hit three years there. But, um, you know, to be real, nonprofit sector is you got to do it because you love it. Because it, does, it doesn't pay that, that well. And at that point, my YouTube channel was growing. And I just felt like I wanted to do something different. I really wanted to do money and personal finance and money management full time. So I decided to leave. And um, I didn't know what I was doing. I left to Barcelona. And I was just going to figure it out. But then this really awesome opportunity came across. Um came across my radar over the summer while I was in Barcelona and I couldn't say no. So I get to do what I love. It is also a nonprofit, but it's an operating foundation, which is a little different from a regular nonprofit because we only have one funder. So nonprofits, they have to uh, collect funding from as many people as they can try to get, f try to fundraise enough money to operate every year, including people's salaries, including the services they provide and the materials they need. Our organization doesn't need to do that. We're blessed to have the funding that we need through an endowment. So we provide workshops and services to students and 
people around the country for free, which is amazing. I love investing mobile apps. I use uh, robo. I use robo advisors like um, Betterment and Wealthfront. I use them both. First steps to establishing credit: you gotta open an account. You <laughs> pick what account you want. If you a student loan, a credit card, um, you need to borrow money from somebody and pay it back on time every month so that you can show that you have credit that you've borrowed that you pay it back to your responsible um, I used to think no credit is good in high school is too early I don't think high school is too early I think if you're 18 or if you're below 18 if you're under the age of 18 your parent has to uh, open a, like or somebody that you know that you trust has to add you as an authorized user on their credit card because in order to get your own credit card you have to be 18 but I definitely think that's a good idea. Just make sure you are responsible and you know how to use, um, you know, your, your, your credit card for emergencies only or from time to time, whatever your plan is. But don't be using it for everything all the time, buying your friends pizza and acting crazy like I was in college because then your credit's going to be bad. Um, do you have a podcast? No, I don't. A lot of people actually be telling me that I should get a podcast and I'll think more about it. But right now I just have my YouTube channel. Um, I'm on Instagram. I'm on Facebook. I'm on Twitter. But no, I don't have a podcast. Um, let's see. Hi, Glory. Oh, I'm sorry. I'm like scrolling through this so slow. I feel like all the questions that I'm looking at were asked a long time ago. Uh, what do you think about investing mobile apps? Yep, I answered that one. What's your bank? Glory asked me, what's my bank? So I have two accounts. One account that I have right now is with Charles Schwab, and that is for my checking account. And the reason I chose them for my checking account is because I have um, free ATM use. So like any ATM card that I use anywhere, I get... Um, I get the ATM fee that they charge me on the spot. I get it back at the end of the month from Charles Schwab. Um, so you can use any ATM from any bank anywhere without paying ATM fees. You Obviously, in the moment, you pay it, but then later they give it back to you. And also, most checking accounts don't give you interest because it's not a savings account and they know you're going to use the money a lot. But Charles Schwab actually does offer you interest. So I love that. I, I'm earning interest on my checking account and I don't have to pay ATM fees. So that's why I have Charles Schwab, S-C-H-W-A-B. And then um, for my savings account, I have an Ally savings account, which I'm considering switching just because like, I love Ally Bank and I started with them probably about a year and a half ago. I used to have a Bank of America checking and savings and I shut down my whole Bank of America thing because they were giving me no interest on my savings account, 0 0.01. Every $100 at the end of the year, they give me a penny back like that. Anyway, we talked about that. So uh, I switched to Ally for my savings and then I have... Um, Charles Schwab for my checking but with Ally right now I think it's 2.1 or 2.2 percent for my savings and I know Marcus by Goldman Sachs is at 2.45 so I'm considering changing it but I don't know if it's really worth it to be constantly changing your savings account just for like you know two pennies on every hundred dollars every year it's better to just have your account so I've been thinking about it just because um the Marcus account has been getting a lot of attention so I'll see I'll post if I do change it but right now probably not CIT Bank yep CIT Bank has a really good um interest on their savings account as well i think it's more than two percent they look like dunkin donuts <laughs> they're not dunkin donuts they're not munchkins these are vegan and they're actually healthy for you they have they're packed with protein and a lot of really good plant-based ingredients what do you think about reinvesting dividends i have that option with my roth array absolutely yes pick it because remember what we talked about with sipc versus fdic when you don't reinvest your dividends that money just sits in um that account or it comes back to you in your checking account every quarter as dividends um but it's better to just put that money right back into the account and let it all keep growing just don't even pay attention to the accounts and even the profits that you're making just keep reinvesting them just let it keep growing on top of growth on top of growth and you know let it make as much growth as it can make over time like those couple dollars every quarter or you know whatever it is it's not let it's better if you reinvest it a robo advising gives you the option to automatically reinvest which i love that and it's also better for your taxes because if you don't reinvest them you have to basically report that you took those dividends and those are profits that you made so it's better to not have to report that on your taxes and just leave it all and reinvest it what's a good salary to live on your own in new york city it depends where you're trying to live if you want to live real fancy in a studio like this and you're paying thousands of dollars a month like you need to be making Minimum like seventy five, eighty thousand dollars by yourself. But if you are okay with like two or three other roommates, I was making what, forty seven thousand, fifty five thousand, and then sixty thousand for my three jobs before this job. And every single one of those salaries, I had an apartment that was less than a thousand dollars with two other roommates. So I paid like seven hundred fifty or eight hundred dollar rent. 
I never paid more than 800 until I moved here. So I was able to save a lot of money. How do I open a Roth IRA? You just have to go to a brokerage. You have to pick a brokerage that you like and open a, an IRA. So you can choose anyone that you like. I like Betterment, I like Wealthfront, um, but there's so many, you know, there's so many um, different ones that you can choose from. So you just have to do the research. What's the best uh, brokerage to open an IRA in 2019? You know, type that into Google and, and read about all of them and pick the one that you like the best. Be careful about the minimums that they require you to put in and be careful about the fees that they charge. Those are the two things you really wanna look up. The one and only Sima, Sima says, very informative, thanks. You're welcome, I'm glad it's informative. I mean, this is like, I just jumped on here to talk. I was I was just doing this while I finished my little, um, my little vegan treats and I'm already done, but I'll wrap up in like another five minutes. Um, do some videos in Spanish, represent Latinos. I know, Carlos, I know, I know. I'm trying to get that going. Is New York a good place to start marketing? I mean, I think so. New York is very diverse and um, I don't do a lot of marketing. I just started with two paid ads on Instagram. You guys might see them in your feed. One of them is a sponsored post about my meal preps and another one is about me, um, my channel and me when I took a vacation. That, I put like $200 on those and put them in the sponsor just because I was like, let me see if I can grow my following, get more people to pay attention to what I'm doing. But I haven't really done real marketing. That's like the most that I did. Um, so, you know, I, I'm not huge on on marketing yet because I don't I'm not trying to collect any uh, money from people I don't I'm not like trying to sell a product or service or anything like that you know yeah maybe one day I will but not now when you contribute to a Roth IRA let's say you put a dollar in it then it gets taxed now 75 cents is yours um a Roth IRA you put, use dollars that have already been taxed so when you put your money into a Roth IRA you don't have to pay taxes on that ever you, you it was dollars that were already taxed on your paycheck what do you think of M1 Finance? Who's that, T-Rod? Um, I've heard a lot of great things and read a lot of great things about M1 Finance, but I have not used them myself. So I don't know for sure if they're amazing or if excellent. I can say good things about Better Man and Wealthfront because I use them both. However, M1 has great reviews on all the great blogs that I follow on personal finance, so I wouldn't say that they have a bad reputation, but I can't say, I can't speak for it myself. Um, cool, everybody who just joined, I was just making some vegan treats and now I'm wrapping up, but I'm just gonna be on here for like another two minutes. Um, I do not use Robinhood because Robinhood allows you to pick individual stocks and I don't do that. I invest in funds um, that, that invest into the entire stock market at the same time so that I can be guaranteed the average performance of all the stocks instead of trying to pick the ones that are gonna make the most money. Um, I don't do that. Thank you for the chat, Janely. Have a good night. Of course, you're very welcome. Could you please make a video about business credit? I will do my best. I have never taken a business business uh, credit loan or or anything like that, or a business credit card. But I can do some research. Um, but yeah, that's about it. Now I'm craving the kale because y'all made me snack on it to prove that I like eating it dry. Um, but yeah, that's pretty much all I have. If you're interested in the recipe that I used for this, you guys just check my Instagram stories and. Um, let me know what you think if you do try them they are delicious they're the bomb um but that's pretty much it thank you all so much for joining me tonight i hope you enjoyed your day off for martin luther king jr day and um i hope if you're in new york or in another place where it's been snowing and cold like crazy that you're staying warm um and that's all i have for you guys so i will talk to y'all next time peace